Hi and welcome to Access Chat. Four years ago we had a really stupid idea and um, we invited Gareth Ford Williams to be our first ever guest on Access Chat. I, I thought, you know what, stupidity is when you don't learn from your mistakes. So um, I <laughs> welcome back for our fourth anniversary. Gareth, I think, Gareth it's I think to have you four back. years is enough to forget. It's, uh, yeah. is, was, it, was it not? <laughs> I can't yeah. remember. Let's, fi let's just find out. This is science. It's repeated. <laughs> if it happens yeah. twice, that's science. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bad science. Very <laughs> bad science. <laughs> Quite a bit in accessibility, actually. Now, maybe that's a topic. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where is the data? Where is yeah. the data? Yeah, so we've got some empirical data somewhere. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, Gareth is, is actually um, been working in accessibility for a very long time um, and has been leading uh, work. Yes, wow. working on, on the BBC, on projects such as iPlayer, on UView, on you name it. Um, actually, that's not a BBC product, um, but it could be. <laughs> Um, so it's fantastic to have you back. You know, you're uh, always doing innovative stuff and research and um, bringing talent into the wider accessibility community because let's face it, where do all of the expensive consultancies go to recruit their next expensive consultant? <laughs> so, uh... Yes, we've lost one or two. <laughs> yeah. I can think of. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, so, it's a, so it's a good breeding right? ground. Yeah, what are you oh, doing? Oh, crikey! Um, <laughs> how long have you got? Um, we're doing a lot. Oh, I mean, this, this, this is this is this is the great thing about accessibility, and there's there's, there's so much to go at. Um, you know, it, it's not access. It, it's sometimes very easy to easy to define what accessibility isn't, and we can get too bogged down in standards and guidelines, etc. And 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 forget about the fact that it's it's about people and starting with people and starting with the idea that there is a huge diversity in the you know in the range of human beings. I mean that is humanity. And and when you design or build something, you start but before you've built anything. It's accessible to everyone. We all have an equivalent experience. And the more work you do, if you go about it the wrong way, the more people you filter out in that process. And all accessibility, from, for, for, from our point of view, is during that process, try everything you can not to filter anyone out. So don't get to the end of it and test it and look at your guidelines and go through your checklists. Actually embedding everything right the way through from concept to, to release and through to the iterations. And of course, it's never, you know, give me anything in the world and I'll find you someone who can't use it. Um, you know, you can always do those mismatches, but every single time, if you learn and get better and better and better, you, you're constantly chasing, you know, that idea that one day we're going to get to a point where we have this fabulous approach to stuff where really you're going to struggle ever to find anyone who can't access the content. Um, there's a chap called Richard Northover, who's a, he's a product manager. I think I think he's in GDS these days. I've, I've lost track a little bit with Richard. And he summed it up with a, a single word. This was quite a long, many years ago, and he was a client-side developer senior um, at, the, at the BBC. Brilliant chap. And, uh, and he said he had this idea that it should, shouldn't be called accessibility, and it, it should be called equivalence. That's with a CE. So whatever it is you build, everyone has an equivalent experience. They all come away feeling like they've all participated, they've all learnt the same things, they've all enjoyed it just as much, it's been as fun for everyone. And he said, and if we can get towards that concept of equivalence, that's what accessibility is. And I suppose, you know, so everything we do um, is really based around that, that sort of, that idea, that notion of equivalence. Um, and it's great. At, at the end of the day, you know, I, 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 I'm in a job because we're constantly being taught by our users. You know, we, we, we talk to them, they, they, they're experts in themselves, <laughs> they're experts in what they love, <laughs> and, you know, and they, they, there's always things that are improved, you know, we can improve on, there's always things that we can explore, 
Um, so we're very busy. I mean, I suppose, in back to the question, uh, we've gone off on a lovely tangent there. Um, getting back to the question of what we're working on at the minute, um, we've gone through a lot of phases. I think, I think we were moving into a phase the last time we spoke where we were trying to move away from a sort of guidelines auditing type, you know, at the time, a very sort of standards approach, which is what we started with way back in 2005. And we were trying to sort of embed everything into processes and we were building a champions network maybe at the time. I think we were doing that at the time, but I get the feeling we might have done that might have been the start yeah, of that. And we were building QA frameworks. We were trying to understand everything in this entire process. And we're going through another phase now where we're taking everything we've learned in that and then rebuilding it again and saying, actually, you know, the first model did a lot, achieved a lot, wasn't perfect. Let's build a new model. And now we're on to the third model where we're actually moving away from any reliance or dependence on guidelines at all and actually really building everything into um almost like the laws of the way that we build things and the laws as in sort of the way that there are laws of physics, you know, sort of the, the rules in which we build stuff. Um, that's, it's a really fascinating project. It's only really kicked off uh, in the last 12 months um, and we've got a good, good way to go with it. Um, there's that stuff. There's uh, also Jamie Knight, who some people might know quite well. So Jamie is uh, Jamie and Lion. Uh, Jamie's heading up a project around VR, and we're trying to develop a data set um, to actually understand what the challenges are with, within VR and then try and unearth the questions, the initial questions we should be asking about accessibility, and then create a research program off the back of those. Um, and we're still, you know, we're plowing on with things like Champions Networks. The Champions Network has worked out so, so well. There's still so much we can do to improve it. Um, and that's great. We've got over 170 accessibility champions in our division now, and that's people who we train and support and develop within their roles to, to be a voice of accessibility and a go-to person. Um, and is the rest of it is sort of tools, understanding, lots of training, all sorts of bits and pieces, and, and lots of research. Um, yeah, we're always busy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, always finding things, and we look at it and go, hmm. Yeah, we can't we can't find an answer to that, and that's what we spend our time uh, in, you know, sort of squirreling away in in dark corners, poking things, going, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we we need people in dark corners. <laughs> um, yeah, Don't uh, look into uh, any dark corner. You might find me, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's what time of day? Um, but, but, but essentially, we. You know, we, we do need the people looking at, at new ways of interacting. And the thing is, we're going from this fairly static way of consuming information to it being everywhere. So the amount of different touch points you've got now to think about accessibility, it's both an opportunity and a huge extra amount of work and interesting research. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's becoming so mainstream now. And this is the wonderful thing. I think we was... You know, we 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 so often it gets taught as something talked about as something separate, and now we have conversational interfaces, which are basically assistive technology-driven devices. You know, it's voice in, voice out. We've been dealing with that for years. You know, <laughs> there are people that that live in a, an audio and and tactile first world. They're not in a visual world, and we've now got you know non-visual interfaces being mainstream. I mean, people are now teaching the mainstream from an accessibility perspective and i think that is a fascinating thing um you know and contextual it's it's going beyond this disability or at least the the sort of the i want to work on the word traditional because it's not really traditional but there, there's a sort of a, a basic way that a lot of people have, have treated accessibility as being this worthy thing it's around disability but disability in an understanding beyond the sort of the medical understanding into the social and contextual and environmental understanding of disability people are now realizing that it's everyone we're talking about you know we're not talking about necessarily a purple pound anymore or anything there's you know as soon as you're carrying a bag you're a one-handed user 
<laughs> that's it, a child in one arm. You, you're also, you know, that's a cognitive and sensory thing, and you're dealing with them, and you're trying to do stuff, and and there are so many contexts where accessibility touches. I mean, touch points right the way through every day. Accessibility touches it, and it great gives opportunity to to develop all sorts of new and interesting stuff. And and I think it's great to see the marketplace in the last few years cottoning onto this. Um, and uh, you know, and, and, and I, I think it's exciting times. If you work in the world of accessibility at the minute, it's incredibly exciting times. You know, Gareth, it's it's fascinating to me sitting in the United States watching what's happening in the United Kingdom, and I've always been, first of all, always impressed with BBC. BBC is what I watch in the United States. Um, I choose not to watch our American channels because I just can't handle the negativeness of it, and so I don't. And so uh, BBC is where I choose. Not that there isn't negativeness on BBC, but I just feel um, only my perspective. It seems a little bit more balanced than some of the news that I see in the United States that that I just can't stomach, and so I I just don't watch it. But the, so I'm fascinated with BBC as a consumer, um, but I also am fascinated with what you're doing because, and, and I was going to ask you a question and then you proceeded to answer it. Um, really, uh, you started <laughs> answering it before I said it. No, it was, but it's a, the thing that's fascinating to me about what you've been doing and your team. And like you said, you've had some some brilliant people working with you that have you know left and put up their own consulting um, you know, companies and stuff. But I think that what fascinates me so much about the work you're doing at BBC is that you've had some really, really amazing successes and you've learned so much. And like you said, um, you know, at first you were putting together all the processes and, you know, all the touch points and trying to figure all that out and creating the champions. And I have been preaching for years since 2001 in the United States you have to be fully accessible. You have to blend it into everything you do. Well, you're talking about gigantic, gigantic organizations that have all these moving parts constantly, all these technology and communications changing, just the intensity of the world. And so BBC is actually, I think, done. Um, I would put you up there at the very top, and I've said this. People have said, I've had customers in the United States say, well, who do you think is the best out there, Deborah? And uh, I had a very, very large uh, telecommunications company ask me that. And I said, BBC first. <laughs> and then I named some others. And they're like, BBC? I said, yes, BBC. Because the thing that is fascinating to me about what you're doing, like you said, this is for everybody. Everybody benefits from what you're doing. Why would BBC not want all of us to consume the information, the data that you're giving us. Why would you not want to include any of us? But it, it, I always say, um, and I said during this one speech to this large corporation, multinational corporation, I said, you know, there are so many moving parts there, but not only are they doing a good job of embedding it across the way, but they're being very innovative and they're learning and everyone is benefiting from the work they're doing, not just people with disabilities. And so I, I, I am so curious, you know, why does BBC care other than why would BBC not care? But I, I have a lot of corporations still that that I work with or that I follow that they just don't think they can do this. They don't think they can do this. And then BBC is actually just doing it, quietly doing it. And I'm so fascinated with that. Garrett, there are other organizations that can. I, it, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, we, 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 cause we, <laughs> I think you hit the word, the, uh, the nail on the head with one word, is people say we have to do this. And and we we don't have we don't use the word have we we want to do it I, I I don't think I have I can't actually remember ever having a conversation about why we're doing this you know that that job it's part of the organisation you know it's paid for by everyone um, the every director general um, that I've worked under is always says the BBC is for everyone including Tony Hall currently that's that's what he started his first speech to the, all the staff. And uh, he talked to the entire staff, there's 18,000 of us, and he said the BBC 
is for everyone, old or young, rich or poor, you know, whatever your circumstances, everybody deserves the Americans? best. Americans? And uh, uh, if you're a licence fee payer over here, anyone in, you know, and this is it. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the thing that we just do. It's for everyone. And it's on our back of our passes that, you know, we respect diversity. We all work together. It, it, it's just one of those things. It's ingrained into the organisation, the ethos of it. And, and I think we, we spend more of our time trying to work out how we do this. You know, how do we make it for everyone? And, and each time we do, we, we're able to, we are able to make mistakes and we make a lot of mistakes. We're not perfect. And we, but the thing is we get up, pick ourselves up and we've had a good go at something and gone, right, okay, we're going to learn from that. And there's data, there's interesting stuff that's come to come. And then we iterate and it gets better. You know, it's, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's every single stage. As long as you stay focused on, on improving the how, you know, you'll get it. If, you, if you're immediately saying, you know, 100%, we have to do this and we have to do it now, you're never going to hit that. And it's going to be massively stressful. And people generally want to do the right thing. Um, and so you either do the right thing because it's, a, you know, a, a really fantastic journey and everyone's on board and you're all really making a huge effort or you're under the cosh and under threat of not doing it. And that's a really, you know, you've, it's a different experience. Um, it is. And I think, you know, yeah, the, we're there's all about legal. You know, yeah. Compliance. Yeah, it's, compliance. it's all. And, and, and then what happens, and, and I'm, I apologize for stepping on you earlier when I talked about right. you. <laughs> then what, no, it, but, but what happens is then it becomes us and them. And that's what's happened mm -hmm. in the United States. And it's just corporations are like, well, is that, would that make you happy? Okay, well, how about if we do this? How about this? And it's, it's not a partnership. And it feels like what yeah. you're doing in the United Kingdom feels more of like a partnership. Uh, I mean, I've been watching what Neil and Antonio are doing with Atos and, and how they work with, you know, Lloyd's and Barclays and BBC. Yeah. And I'm not seeing as much of that partnership here in my beautiful country. I love being an American, but I, um, and I, I, I'm, I've watched so much what's happening over there in the UK that I think it's time to bring a lot of what you're doing in the UK over to the United States, because yes, we sue each other. Yes, we're about litigation. Yes, we're about risk, but it seems to be that you're about innovation. And I am just curious, Gareth, how do we take what you're doing at the BBC and bring some of those best practices over to the United States? Well, I think we can we can learn. I think it's a two way two way conversation. There's some amazing stuff that goes on in, in American corporations. And I think, you know, seeing the change in culture around accessibility in places like, you know, Microsoft in recent years and and yes. you know yes. and, and the work that comes out of Apple and, you know, Google's team and you know, there's so many others that Actually, we're all Amazon. trying to tackle a different, and Amazon, we're all trying to tackle a different part of the same problem. And we're all trying to find different ways, and there's different cultures and different reasons behind this, so different corporate cultures that drive this. And I think you know, we probably, we're all guilty of, of working in our own bubbles. And I think, you know, stuff can be shared and it can go both ways. And we're always looking for new ideas and new insights and, you know, new techniques and approaches to this stuff. And I think, you know, that there needs to be more sharing. Um, and uh, it's, it's one of those. It is happening. I mean, we spend a lot more time now talking to other organizations, particularly in the UK. And, and we try to with, with, with American organizations as well than we did you know, 10 years ago, there's this far more dialogue. And by the way, I mean, I have to make sure that everyone understands who's listening to this. There isn't one accessibility team at the BBC. They're, 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 I have a very specific remit around digital products, um, but there is a digital services accessibility team. There is a digital internal accessibility team. There's a broadcast accessibility team. There are people in policy and strategy and all sorts of places who work on accessibility. And it's a community approach all the way from the top. So there's an exec champion for access. We had a meeting, we had a workshop the other day around disability and access and staff and how we make everything more accessible in workplaces and communications, etc. And so the dialogue is just constantly going and it's constantly, we're listening to each other and bringing new perspectives in. And I think that kind of community thing across organizations, it can only, you know, if we could, if we could, could do more, it could only, could only do good things.
nothing bad would come of it. It wouldn't get any worse. <laughs> Definitely. I, mean, I sometimes talk to Neil. He sometimes... We, so we have a chat. <laughs> and Paul over in Barclays and that gang and, you know, Al yeah. in uh, in GDS and, you know, and, and we we go and listen to each other and we, we walk away sometimes and go, hmm, that's quite... That's, that's an interesting one. Let's have a bit of a poke around and see what we, we make of that idea. But yeah, it's, it, it is. It, it is the, 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 the network and the culture around this is evolving. It is getting better. Um, sometimes we, we feel like it's not fast enough, but it is improving. It is improving. But yeah, we have to get rid of that, have to do it. And pe- people yes. just say, just, can we just do this because it's the right thing? <laughs> Antonio? No, oh, no um, I, I'm no. This week I, I'm in Portugal, and the Portuguese television was very well was influenced by the work that has been done at the BBC over the years. We have been plenty of uh, journalists and people of uh, executives who have worked at the BBC or have been there just to to learn from it. And this notion of public service has a huge uh, impact in the way how they deliver that service. And maybe sometimes what I feel is sometimes in US they might be missing this link and what we mean in Europe by public service. And and the, the fact that this is, this is embedded w- within you know, our national uh, television, it makes the work the, of everyone that works there a lot easier. Because, it's, like Garrett was saying, is something that is well understood from the leadership. So, people don't have to justify themselves about what they are doing. So, uh, and things, and society in general end up to benefit from it. So, I think sometimes, what what you were saying, Deborah, in relation to the services, this link with what real uh, uh, the real meaning behind public service is sometimes that what is missed in the United States. Yeah, good point. Good point. And yet we've had we've had uh, managers who've, who've, who've joined here from American companies, and they've just got it, um, uh, you know, really, really quickly. And they, 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 you know, and, and you hope they take that back. They, we've had you know directors from the states and and team leaders and all sorts of people that you know that I could I could reel off a whole bunch of names of people who've turned up and really understand it. And hopefully they've taken some of that culture back with them. You know, and people who've contacted me and going, right, okay, I've never experienced this before. Come and teach me what is the experience of a screen reader. I've got my product. I want to know what it works like. And they just get into it. And I think it's giving the yeah, permission to be too. playful. Right. It's the playfulness around right. it. This is, this is interesting, and it's fun, and it's about human beings. And it's giving people the permission to play and understand yes. Yes. And, and just, you know, try stuff out. Um, and I think in sometimes, you know, the culture of organizations it doesn't squash that, but it, you find it difficult finding that flex within it. Right. And, and, may, may, and I, maybe uh, we're a bit privileged here, for, you know, in the BBC. Maybe, you know, we are a very privileged organization because we don't have to make any money. You know, we're funded. So we're never thinking about profits and ties because we're thinking about things that are kind of really weird and ephemeral, like public value. I can't actually tell you what that is, but we all get an, a notion and a sense of it through what we do. I think we need to, all of us need to do that a little bit more. It's okay to make money, but you should have a purpose. Yeah. You should think yeah, about absolutely. people on the planet too. And I found that same company, I was training them, and that asked me which I thought was the, be- the best ones, and I did put ATOS in there as well. But um, And a few American companies, that, as a matter of fact, I did include Microsoft, Google, and um, Amazon on there, but BBC was the top one. But one thing that I found that when I was teaching, I did all these different training classes about accessibility, and the, the technologists that were in the class, uh, many of them, I think, knew more about it than I did. And I'm like, well, well, if you know this, why aren't you doing it? And they said, oh, Deborah, we're not doing it because we haven't been asked to do it. And we don't have time. And it's not always appreciated if we are the ones that are saying, yeah, but, you know, this isn't going to be accessible. We actually, you know, and so this compliance, 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 we're going to sue you. We're going to get you mentality, I think, is really hurting the innovation. So I think the Americans are brilliant. We can add a lot of value, but I think this constant I'm going to get you approach is hurting innovation. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it is. And I think people worry as well about how complicated things can be. And actually, this right. accessibility is not a complicated task. It's 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 difficult. It takes a you know you you've got to whether any human being designing for a, a any other human being you know you you you've, you're always dealing with empathy to any audience that you're dealing with. And I think if your people are given a lot more support to be brave and 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 to understand and stuff, there's so much more that can be achieved. And I think people worry about doing the wrong thing, and then they end up doing nothing. Because they worry, this is going to, or maybe this will cost a lot of money, or maybe this will, you know, be the hole that all our time goes into, and we won't achieve anything, or we'll insult people by getting it wrong. And it's like, no, it, it, it's okay. It, it's it's a, it's okay to play, and it's okay to be wrong, you know, every now and again, as long as you're making that effort, as long as you're you're on that path, it's fine. Um, and I think there's that, maybe that's where that worry is of of trying and failing, and then being accused. Of, of you know of doing the wrong thing is isn't isn't great it isn't helpful but i suppose there's a counter argument that sometimes it kick starts the process and and gets stuff going it gets it onto the table by being in law so you know this there's, there's good and bad things i i mean i've, I've been looking at, at some different angles and and i think punitive laws on their own are, are, are not very helpful um, I think we need more like frameworks. So one of the things I've been uh, stealing the ideas of, of Jim Tobias, and um, it's always good to steal some ideas from. Um, you know, he, he came up with the, the sort of concept of externalities and inaccessibility being like pollution, which I love. Um, and, and then thinking about how we can apply these frameworks for um, but dealing with things like um, pollution and, and carbon emissions, and and yeah. use that same kind of approach to make sure that, that you know that the, the the producers are paying the the costs of inaccessibility, the costs that are currently met by society, and doing it in such a way that it's not punitive to business at the same time, because everyone just what what you have at the moment is no fines, no fines, no fines, massive fine. Um, yeah. and, and and these companies that, that that end up in the test cases are no worse than most of the others that are out there. They just happen to have been the unlucky ones that got caught, um, or, or yeah. someone's decided to take a test case against. So 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 the, the, there needs to be this kind of fairness and balance in 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 this whole process. And and I'd love to be in your privileged position, um, Sat surrounded by citizen khan and um, and, and um where where doing the right thing is the is is the primary motivator and, I, and I, you know, certainly i believe it is the right thing and of course we, you know, that's why i'm here but but essentially when dealing with other parts of of organizations in the globe and so on it feels like that we need a a change in the way that that we structure a lot of this stuff. So uh, I, yes, I'm really interested. Absolutely, in that. absolutely. We we spend too much time trying to fix it, and we should spend more time not breaking it. And and that's yeah. just my my complete ethos around these things. You know, if if you're planning, if you're planning to fix it, you're planning to break it. You know, that, that's the problem with audits. Audits give you permission to make a mess. And then you are going to have a look at the mess and then make a plan of how to tidy the mess up. Just just don't make a mess in the first place or make the minimum mess. And you're not backloading accessibility all the time. You know, how many times do you hear the accessibility sprint in, you know, people talk about it. Well, at the end, we're going to do an accessibility sprint. It's like it's by that time, it's all over. You know, it's it's not going it, to it, it, with all the will in the world, you're not going to fix it. Just don't design a building and then think about how you're going to put ramps in. Design a building that's on the ground floor, so you never have to put ramps in and people just come in and out. You know, they, it it it's all those sort of intrinsic approaches is where is where the key to all of this is. Um, yeah. And uh, and that's what we do. This this is why I don't think we've audited in nearly six years now. Uh, we've not done an audit, and and I I just don't believe in them. No one likes being audited anyway. It's a horrible word. Someone turns up and tells you that you've broken stuff, and, and you know, and it's it's um it's very loaded, and 
you know, and nobody likes going through that. And it, it then creates just friction and problems and accessibility becomes something that people become frightened of. It's like, um, oh, God, Gareth's turned up to audit me. And that was, that's what it was at one point. You know, I'm rocking up at, in products to tell them how bad they were. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a not good way if you want to make friends. I can tell you. <laughs> I mean, you have to sit down and help people fix stuff, and you know, but it's not good. Yeah, I I I guess you know it's it's one of those things you know finger pointing accessibility. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So no, no, absolutely. We, yeah. we, we, we want we, we want to be helpful. We want to be yeah. Be good. And you make, make it something that people all, they all just want to do it. They're excited about doing it, you know, and, and you know, and everyone is engaged in it. Everyone owns a bit of it and, and, uh, and it's great fun. And, it, you know, and we get the users involved as much as we can with stuff. And particularly, you know, there's a games team here that are doing heck of a lot of great stuff around children's games and trying to understand the way that, you know, different children with different challenges, how do they play? How do we integrate? And move, we moved the, 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 whole, the whole discussion away from excess games and accessing games through to inclusive games where as many children as possible can join in with the fun. And then they, have, they can talk to each other about the fun that they had. It's a social thing. They're having the same dialogue and with their friends because they're all playing the same game and all having fun. And fun is the thing that's the most important thing in that. You know, kids often, they don't... They don't they, I think they learn to see difference. They learn to acknowledge difference, and difference becomes something that is taught to them. You know, you get, I've always had this theory, you get five people, uh, five children, five five-year-olds in a room who speak five different languages, may have five different levels of abilities or different conditions. Within five minutes, they've worked out a game, because play is more important. It's the most important thing to those small kids, is we need to play, and they'll find a way of doing it. If they can do it, we can do it. You know, we, we <laughs> you know, kids have worked this thing out. <laughs> Fire me, hire a five-year-old. It'll be sorted in a week. <laughs> Don't, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is just between you, us, and, uh, and, and, and several and thousand other people. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Gareth, uh, we, we we met here about you know, four years ago. I'm not going to ask uh, about your level and how your rate of popularity at the BBC between 2014 and 2018. Don't get involved. Don't get yeah. invited to parties. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to, to ask you know how you see you know four years ago and today. What have you seen changing? Uh, is there are we still where we were or uh, it's easy for others to know who we are today than four years ago. It's it has changed. I mean, the organisation has gone through a lot of change over the last, you know, four to six years. Anyway, I mean, all organisations change. So the the relationships change. But I think I think the Champions Network was a was a was a cracking way of of, of mainstreaming accessibility into processes. It's you know, it, we don't own it. We're not, a, you know, a magical team in the corner that will rock up and fix stuff for you. You know, we're all fixing stuff and we're all questioning stuff and we're all learning. And we just got to facilitate that. And so we build tools and processes and get people together. And we spend a lot of time between products, almost like being a dating agent, that they, they, they've they got a problem over there. That lot fixed it earlier. You guys should all get together and have a chat because you've got a similar thing and oh gosh they're they're going to be dealing with this in six months so they can get involved and and it, it's just facilitating that dialogue and that and so we're still a small team there's just myself there's michael there's jamie there's rebecca and there's emma and 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 that's it and we're dealing with an organization that has four and a half million live pages and you know we're we're pumping up hundreds if not thousands of of, of videos a week and you know, it's it's a huge organisation. Um, you know, and I can't remember how many million browsers we have every day, but it is like 13, 14 million browsers. And I think can't remember our weekly is internationally is about 350 million. But you know, it's enormous, and we do it with a very, very small team because we don't we don't turn it into a dark art. We've we've done that whole thing of of getting it out from our team and getting it made, getting it out there as a as a something that everyone talks about and everyone owns. Um, and it's good. It's re it's really good. I I think 
Uh, my big problem is, my one big problem in the world, and this is my shout out to the rest of the organization, is stop inventing stuff. Um, because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's that whole thing of, you know, someone comes up with a great idea and you're there going, okay, we're starting again. Uh, there's another thing that we need to deconstruct and talk about. And, and you never get on, to, this is why you never get on top of it, you know, fully. You're constantly, and even right. with stuff right. like, you know, we invented closed captions in like 1971 and launched the first closed caption service in the world in 1979. Um, and and yet we there's still a team, there's a chap called Nigel Meggett, who's driving a team that is, and, and there's teams actually in, in R&D as well, uh, that are still looking at, you know, what we call subtitles in the States is closed captioning and improving the way that this is delivered. And, yeah, and there's TV operations, Simon Smith, his team, that, that own the delivery of that on broadcast. And, and there's all this R&D and we're still saying this could be better or there's more opportunities with this content. I'm really, really, really afraid I'm going to be thrown out of this room in about one minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're, we're really looking forward yeah. to having that as a final shot. Yeah. So, there are, so, there are uh, people sort of... lurking outside, <laughs> and uh, 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 thank you. I'm pretending, <laughs> I, I'm pretending <laughs> I don't know they're there. Yeah, no, so it's been great having you on. We just need to say thank you very much for, for being with us now and four years ago and being part of the Accessibility family, and to thank other members of our Accessibility family, Barclays and My Clear Text, for supporting us as well so thank you very much look forward to you joining us on twitter it's 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 been Absolutely. emotional <laughs> yeah and maybe in four years we I'll adore come back you, again. <laughs> oh thank you thank you, thank you so you. much thank you so much for inviting me back it's been a pl absolute pleasure it's lovely all right. thank you great all right you can uh, see you, soon. you can come and take him away now <laughs>